sing, 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 sing. Everybody start to sing. La di da, ho ho ho. Now you're singing with a swing. Sing, 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 sing. Everybody start to sing. I hope that the person who sees the novel, who sees the books, or even buys it, will be curious to find out what gargling tar actually means so that he can read about it. But the very beginning of tar in the title um, links back to a dog that I used to have until I was about 14. Um, and the dog had the dog has had fleas and there is a special tar based soap to get rid of those fleas and then I found out that the tar based um, shampoos are um, used against against other parasites uh, so these children who are um, in an orphanage basically in an institution are forced to speak Czech because they it takes place after the World War II. They are of different origins. Yes, absolutely. Mysterious origins sometimes. Uh, often these are Russians or other um, nations. Uh, and if they speak uh, using their mother tongue, they have to gargle tar as a punishment and that's uh, imposed on them by the sisters yeah not sisters as nurses but sisters as a religious order uh, can I continue about the title I've actually heard or read that in North America where there were Indian children put in mainstream schools back in 1890 they did the same thing if they spoke their mother tongue, their original language, they were punished for it. They were beaten for that. I thought it was just a fickle of my imagination. But, in fact, it was a reality somewhere in the world. And the whole novel was a creation of your imagination. Um, it uh, is fiction, however, takes place on the backdrop of Czech history, thus uh, developing various issues, including the the communist takeover, uh, the Soviet invasion, and so on. It plays around with the Bolshevik mysticisms. Uh, and for me, it was a bit of a risk. And I wanted to be thought provoking. I wondered whether younger generation would be able to read it. That is, those youngsters who do not encounter this Bolshevik mysticism. The church service was led by the priest, Mr. Franciszek, and because the local boys served at the altar, so the boxer shorts headed by Diha, Pata, and Carol always put themselves into the front rows, while Mr. Franciszek and the nun sisters were preoccupied with praying or stories of the saints and not watching over us, the boxer shorts walked gestures with the altar boys and showed their clenched fists. The altar boys kept constantly close to the priest because it left isolated amongst us somewhere in the church, they would have got their faces slapped. And the priest, Franciszek, explained that love is the sweetness of the world and who was, uh, has it not has nothing. The sisters watched over us, breathing all while up on the frozen fingers, and we listened to Mr. Franciszek because we had to. And then when he talked about love and being loving, the boys snickered aloud. But after a while, he had stopped nudging each other. We were freezing cold because we had snowballing each other outside church. Uh, out of the local people, only the Sirim boys and old women went to morning mass who loved the holy singing of Shkliba and the other church singers from our ranks and engaged in Shkliba's choristers. I remember some of these old ladies from the old times when the home wasn't yet the home and the sisters were not yet ruling over it. And I thought the old women didn't remember me anymore, but I was wrong about that. I was also chosen once to accompany the funerals, but then it was decided that the funerals would only be accompanied by Czech boys because it looked better, especially when they cried a lot. They got heaps of sweets and soup and other nice things to eat, and they always had to give up some portion of the boxer shorts who refused to cry at the villagers' funerals, um, and the ones who did, uh, got this bit of benefit um, out of the funerals of being crybabies, but it wasn't like that. The boxer shorts weren't wanted by anyone at the fun funerals because they were obstinate, rude, and defiant, and stole everything that was nailed down, 
and I never got to do any singing, and I didn't care. The singers called themselves gr chorister group, and they were led by Sister Euralia, and Shkliba was their leading singer. But in winter, the boys set their voices resounding only seldom. Even the priest's teeth sometimes chattered with cold, the frosty weather, just like us. And then at mass, he put the pace of production. And it is the old Sejem Bidis said he went along with us to early mass and gave apples and nuts in front of the church, upon which the most senior of the long shirts knocked out of the last month. When we went to church in the morning, we were lined up first line in the sh shirts off because we walked more slowly, wouldn't be able to keep, and so on. For the dogs that barked at us, we didn't know us yet, because we didn't, and yet we have our commander Vishlata in charge, uh, who would be hiring us to the village people to do our jobs. The dogs didn't know us at all, and they barked at us, and the procession of children muffled up to the ears. Sing, 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 sing. Everybody start to sing. La -di -da, ho, ho, ho. Now you're singing with a swing. Sing, 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 sing.